take in this trial going forward. There'll also be six alternates that they have to try to weed, weed out and get uh, some impartial people that are part of this trial. So we'll continue to follow this. Of course, expected to go to 4 p.m. today. We'll send it back to you. All right, John, thank you so much for that update. So until 4 p.m., a little ways to go. We'll see if they get to anything substantial. Appreciate it. All right, now to our other top story. Of course, we wait to see what Israel's response will be after an attack on Iran. We do know Volodymyr Zelensky, president of Ukraine, called the attack on Israel a wake-up call to the U.S. to support its allies. And he says efforts need to be taken to prevent escalation in the region. Obviously, he is looking for more funding, a bill that will come up this week for foreign aid here in the United States. Another number, Israel spent $1 billion over the weekend during that attack on Saturday to intercept the drones, and that is for a huge price tag, and Iran, a much lower cost for them to carry out this attack. Let's bring in our panel to weigh in on what may happen next. We're pleased to have open source intelligence analyst Ryan McBeth, and he is the senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, Benham Ben Tablu. Uh, guys, welcome in. Good to see you again. I know we spoke Saturday as this was uh, breaking news in Israel. Good to see you both back. Thank you. Likewise, thank you billion dollars. So uh, a lot of uh, depletion on Israel's side. Benham, I'll start with you and pretty low cost for Iran. Is that a win for them, even though there wasn't a lot of damage? What do they take away? And domestically, obviously, they can save face saying we did something after Syria. Well, this has actually been a consistent element uh, of Iranian strategy here. Even in 2021, for example, uh, Iran talked about the war between Hamas uh, and Israel, saying that whether the Israelis intercept or not, they would still lose because of the financial proposition that exists, meaning the cheaper rockets, missiles, mortars, drones, that the Axis side fires and the more expensive interceptors that Israel fires, America fires, even Jordan fires. Uh, this doesn't mean we shouldn't be intercepting. This is actually a big win for uh, missile defense but it's mm. a reminder that these are ways to manage the problem, not solve the problem. Until you have deterrence by punishment, meaning until Iran knows that it will risk losing something more than the cost of the munitions it expends, it can Great point. likely do this again and again and again. I mean, are we going to solve this problem when, well, Ukraine's not solved either. You had Zelensky saying these drones that Iran supplied to Russia have fallen in my country. So we have multiple fronts that need to be solved, Ryan. And uh, a president who didn't even come out and face the nation sent out a tweet at midnight. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. There, there are some differences. One example is that Ukraine is about 28 times uh, larger than Israel was. So it's a lot harder to uh, defend Ukraine than it would be to defend Israel. But uh, I do think we're, we're looking at a, a president who is somewhat detached from the reality of the situation and just kind of wants this problem to go away. It's not going away. And if you're Israel, in fact, it's, it, they are probably going to do something. The War Cabinet has said that. Uh, we have the nuclear sites there. Do you think, Benham, that they go after a nuclear site in Iran? And, and should they? I think it's unlikely that Israel would go after a nuclear site, given that to successfully set back the program, they would even need American support. You know, even prior to October 7, there was still a discussion of does Israel have even sufficient air refueling capabilities? This doesn't mean they don't have, uh, you know, exceptionally talented F-35 pilots or other capabilities that may not be public. We know, for example, that they've trained on surface-to-air missiles that the Iranians have. Right. For example, they've trained in Cyprus on the S-300. But I think you're more likely to see if there is an overt response, an attack on IRGC facilities, on an attack on military facilities, in an attempt to restore deterrence by punishment. Okay. Well, that was sort of what they did in Syria, though, and it escalated. So, Ryan, uh, what do we have next? And also, we can't underscore maybe Iran will, will they continue, will operate with the proxies. I mean, we have Hezbollah. They're still engaged very heavily. We have the Houthis, and they have the leverage. As we talked about the economic stuff, they can obviously push the lever, not in just the uh, Strait of Hormuz, but as they have been in the Red Sea. Absolutely. Now, when you're talking about counterattacks, you need to kind of think outside the box here. There might be a counterattack going on right now that we don't even see because it's a cyber attack. I would not be surprised if next Monday some of the uh, workers at the drone plant in Armabad come into work and their laptops are on fire. So there yeah. are multiple ways of taking care of this problem.
Well said. I mean, and that's sort of at the heart of it. We were all watching it unfold Saturday. Benham, last question to you in our final 10 seconds. I mean, Israel has higher capabilities, more sophisticated weaponry and military, yet Iran felt emboldened. That right there, many say, is, is strikingly different than what we've seen before. Indeed, and that's been the problem, and nothing exemplified that problem more than when President Biden said no and the regime went ahead anyway. Yeah, no does not seem to work. And uh, negotiating with terrorists like redesignating and then not designating the Houthis, really bad optics. Appreciate your analysis. Again, it's great to have you both with us again today, Benham and Ryan. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Appreciate it. Thank you. We continue to watch, obviously, the Middle East, our southern border. and But what is New York and Alvin Bragg focused on? Well, Joe.